Hello coders, in this video, we are going to look at an amazing Python library named PyAutoGUI. You can also call it as PyAutoGUI. As the name suggests, this is a GUI automation package. Using this library, you can automate anything on your computer because this package has several features by which you can control the mouse and keyboard operations. So in this video, I will show you all the mouse and keyboard operations and then using those operations, you can automate anything or I would say everything on your computer. So let's get started. I assume that Python and VS Code editor is installed into your computer. If not, then you can download it. I have provided the links inside the description box. So now I'm inside my VS Code. I'll set the language to Python and I'll create a new file on my desktop. Done. Now you know that we are going to use the Python package named PyAutoGUI. So let's install it. I'll type pip install PyAutoGUI. Enter. I have already installed it. Next we will use this package and see how to control our mouse and keyboard. So to use this package, we'll import it. I'll type import PyAutoGUI. Now we'll start with the mouse operations. We'll see how to control the mouse movements, the clicks, drags and scrolls. See, the location on your screen are referred to by X and Y coordinates. The X coordinate starts at zero on the top left side and increases going towards the right. And the Y coordinate also starts at zero on the top left and it increases going downwards. So the pixel at the top left corner is at coordinates zero comma zero. If your screen's resolution is 1920 into 1080, then the pixel in the lower right corner will be 1919 comma 1079. Since the coordinates begin at zero, not one. So in order to know the screen resolution, there is this function called as size print by auto gy period size. This is going to print the resolution of your screen. I'll just run this and show it to you. There you go. You see, it says size where width is 1920 and height is 1080. Now next is how to get the current coordinates of the mouse or the cursor. In order to do that, there is a function named position. I'll do pi auto gui dot position. And I'll print this. And now let's run this and you'll see the current position, the current coordinates of the cursor. So I'll keep the cursor at 0 comma 0 and I'll run this. So you see, it gives me x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. That is the current position of the cursor. Now let me show you something. I'll do over here while true. I'm creating an infinite loop and after printing, I'll just put a sleep of two seconds. I'll save and now I'll run this. Now you see, you can see the cursor's position is changing. I'm moving my mouse. See, I went to the lower right and it came 1919. So that's how you get the current position of the cursor. I can also write it in this way x comma y is equal to pi auto gy dot position because this function is going to return x value and y value i'll just type the comment get resolution get the current cursor position now if you want to check whether a given coordinate is present on the screen or no so i'll say check if the cursor is on screen to do that there is a method called on screen I'll type pi auto gy period on screen and it takes two parameters that is the coordinates x and y this is going to return to me true or false a boolean value if the coordinates are present on the screen then it will return true and if it is not present then it will return false you can see it's giving me true but if i change this first parameter the x value to minus one it's not going to be on the screen. So it will return to me false. Now you're going to see some interesting functions. How to move the mouse? For moving the mouse, there is a function called move to. 
I'll type that pi auto gy period move to and we have to pass the coordinates to this function. So this function is going to move your cursor to the coordinates that you will give. I am passing 100 and 500 and I'll run and see. Let me just take the mouse little down so that when I run this, you'll see the mouse will appear at the position 100 comma 500. And there you go. You just move from here to here. Now there is one more parameter that you can pass to this function and that is the duration. And I'll set it to 2 seconds which means that the mouse is going to take 2 seconds to move to this position. Let's run and see. You see the mouse moved little slowly. It took 2 seconds for the mouse to move. I'll change it to 1 and check. See, this time it was quick. So now if you want to move the mouse cursor relative to its current position, that means currently wherever the mouse is, from there if you want to move towards left, right, up or down, then to do that, there is a function name move rel, which means move relative. And I'll say x is 500 and y is 200. So now if we run this, then because of move to function, our current coordinates will be 100 and 500. And then the move rel function will add this 500 to 100 and 200 to 500. So it is going to move the cursor relative to the current position. So then finally the cursor would be at x600 and y700. Let's run this. You see, it went towards the left and it went little downwards. Right? We can again pass the duration to this function. I'll just pass one second. Let's run again and see. You could see this time the cursor moving. By the way, coders, please do watch this video till the end because I will be showing how you can use all these operations and try to automate something. Now, if you want to drag the mouse, that means, you know, holding a click and moving, right? So if you want to drag your mouse, then there is a function named drag to. I'll type and show you. Again, same, you pass the X and Y coordinates to this function. And this time you can pass a button. That is, which button do you want to hold? So the button values are left, middle and right. These are the clicks on your mouse. Left means left click, right is right click. So it will hold the mouse and move to the coordinates which you have passed. You can also pass duration to this function. And as we saw move to and move rel, similarly there is drag to and drag rel. I'll just type drag rel, prior to gui, drag rel, yes. Now we'll see the important function that is clicking the mouse. How you can click the mouse? In order to do that, pi auto gui period click. That's it. This will make your mouse perform the click operation. And by default, it will be a left click. I'll show you how it works. What I'll do is before running the code, I will just move my mouse towards this file menu. And now I'll run the code. There you go. It just clicked the file menu. So that was click operation for you. Next is how you can double click. To do that, simply call the method double click. You can also do this by using the click method. What you will have to do is inside the method, you will have to define the clicks. I'll just show you. I'll comment this pi auto gy period click. And inside this method, I'll type clicks is equal to two. That's it. You can also pass X and Y coordinates to the click function. So what it will do is it will move to that coordinate and then click. Here I'll pass 100 comma 10 and I'll come here and run this. You see, it clicked the file menu again. Again, I can pass the duration equal to 2. So now you saw the mouse moving towards the file menu and it clicked. Now next operation is scrolling. How to make our mouse scroll? To do that, I auto GUI scroll. If you put a positive number, it is going to scroll up. And if you put a negative number, it will scroll down. So I'll just put a big number, say for example, 300. And I'll run this. And you see, it just scrolled up. 
Similarly, I'll pass minus 300 and you'll see that it scrolls down. You see? And by this coders, we are done with the mouse operations. Let us move forward and learn some keyboard operations. I'll type keyboard functions. The primary keyboard function is named write. This function will type the characters in the string that is passed. So whatever you want to type, you can just pass inside this. Let's say you want to type hello. So you just have to type hello and maybe exclamation mark. Then this function write will just print this hello wherever the cursor is. And then I'll say write welcome to coding 101 with Steve. So this will type welcome to coding 101 with Steve. Simple, right? But there is one limitation in this function. You cannot press shift key or F1 keys or you cannot perform the shortcuts. For example, control C or control V. So you cannot perform all these operations using write function. So in order to do that, there is another function called hotkey. To this function, you can pass the key names like this. Say if I want to perform copy, then what I'll do is I'll pass control and then I'll pass C. Similarly, I can do control plus V. And if I want to type a capital C, then I will do shift and C like this. And coders, by this, we have seen all the basic and important mouse and keyboard operations. So now I will use these functions and try to automate my notepad. I'll control my mouse and bring it to the search bar. Then I'll type notepad. Then I'll move the mouse to the notepad icon. Then I'll double click and finally type something. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I've already done my trial and errors and come up with this code let me explain to you line by line what this code does firstly it says move to x150 and y1079 this is the position where my search bar is so the mouse will come to the search bar then it will wait for two seconds and then it will click so that it will be able to type then using the right function i'm going to type notepad so i will move the mouse wherever the notepad icon is I did some trial and errors and I found that the icon was at the position X200 and Y200 and I've set the duration to 1 and then I've used the double click function by which I can open the notepad and then I'll pause again for 2 seconds so that the notepad opens properly and finally I'll write welcome to coding 101 with Steve. So let me just run this code and show it to you how this works. Wow, did you see that? So that's how you can control your mouse and keyboard and automate everything on your computer. In my next video, I will show one of the most important function of this package and then I will create a small project. If you learned something from this video, then please do not forget to subscribe to my channel in order to be notified about my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video.